We live. <laughs> That's a good stuff. Good evening. A <laughs> little bit delayed. A uh, few technical issues. Good evening, one and all. Um, and welcome to the Goodwin Boxing Show. I'm just trying to bring it up here in front of me now. There we are. Um, there we go. It's live in front of us. So tonight we've got Steve with us. Uh, we've got Adrian Martin. And we've got Max Budgen. So we're going to come on to who they all are shortly. Um, but this week coming up, we're going to discuss some of the uh, shows that are coming up for Goodwin Boxing. Uh, we're going to talk to Adrian about his career to date and where he's going with it. We've got our bets of the week and we've got the, uh, the feature now that Kevin has handily called Drop the Anchor, uh, which will involve me getting punched by well, anyone really. Like, if you want to turn up late and buzz at 7 o'clock, have a go. It's, uh, it's fine. So please do uh, come along and uh, put any comments down and we'll try and answer any questions as we go along. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll crack on then. So we've got Adrian Martin. The t oh no, sound issues. <laughs> Bear with me. Uh, Adrian Martin. So he's uh, an undefeated. You are talking earlier about what weight you're going to end up at, but uh, a present light like, middleweight. Um, highly successful. He's had a, a, an amateur career that's gone back and forth. And then we've got Max Budgen with us, who uh, he's a fan, super fan, highly knowledgeable, uh, and related to Steve, so uh, he was easy and cheap. <laughs> Before we go too far with that, though, we'll come on to a week at Goodwin Boxing. So you've got a couple of new signings this week, I believe? Yeah, we've got one new management signing and one new promotional signing. Uh, we signed Sean Robinson, who's the brother of Luke Robinson, who we've already got. Uh, Sean's a highly talented lad, he's 20 years old. Yeah. And he signed a uh, management with us. Uh, and we signed on a promotional deal uh, Michael Ballingall's son, Lucas Ballingall, who fights for an eight man challenge belt on the 9th of July. How far is he into his career? He's, he's four and up, he's only 19 years old, but he's super, super talented. Yeah. Um, and we're going to look to develop him with Michael. Um, we work very closely with his dad, uh, promoting wise and also management wise. I, I, looked, I took Floyd over um, with Michael, we've done a great job with Floyd. And now we're going to do the same with uh, with Lucas. Okay. But uh, two great signings, and uh, delighted with uh, both of them. Yeah. So Sean Robinson, you say Luke's brother. Luke had his highly successful debut. Yeah. Uh, stoppage his debut. win on his debut. Um, have you got similar hopes then for? for he's sure? young. He's younger. So we've got to take it a little bit slow. He's probably going to take a little bit of time to get his man strength. So. It probably you know will we'll take a little bit longer with him because he's only 20. Yeah. But Luke was really highly impressive on his debut, and I'm, we're hopeful that Sean will have a great career. But we'll obviously manage him, manage him appropriately, and we'll take our time and pick the right fights at the right time yeah. for him. And what weight is um, Lucas? Lucas is uh, he'll be fighting at featherweight. Right. Um, <clears throat> we've um, we have tried to make fights for him before. Um, like Jamie Spates, who issued a press release, he was chasing Mark, the elusive Martin Hillman. <laughs> and um, we also tried to make Lucas Ballingall against the elusive Martin Hillman, but that didn't work either. And we also tried to make Matthew Chandler against the elusive Martin Hillman. Right. Much as I like Martin, he's very elusive from having a proper fight, but there we go. Yeah, no, he likes to talk a lot about proper fights, doesn't he? It's, uh, from what I see, he's... Uh... Well, maybe it's not his choice to be honest. I'm sure Martin, Martin's a lovely kid and a fine yeah. man, but his management... Obviously, don't want him to have a proper fight, so they'll carry on. But, but any of our three lads there will we'll see you'd offer any three of them. Any three, them. any place, any time, any show. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, any three of them will turn up and do it. Okay. But um, there's, so we can pick one with the three if you like. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> Martin. <laughs> they will offer for you. Any but, three. but yeah, no, no, Martin's great. I really like Martin. He's a really nice kid. No, but, but at the end of the day, if you're going to call out a fight and you're going to say you want to fight people, then please don't fight one or please be. Please don't call people out and just get on and fight your foreigners yeah. over eight rounds. It's better just to keep quiet and just keep the illusion. <laughs> no, because realistically, and I'm not being horrible, we have a lot, we have, all of us have fighters that in reality are probably not good enough yeah. and maybe not good enough. So, what, or, or, or developing and take time might will probably be a better fighter in two years' time than he is today. And I think we all have those fighters that are kept to a level. But, but when I manage them, I tell them don't, you know, they don't call out people or mention other people at a higher level. Yeah. And that's the mistake you make. Don't call anybody out. Because if you call people out, you're going to start, boxers are going to get annoyed and it, and it all starts getting silly. So I think he's just, just should carry on doing his stuff because he's, you know, he's doing well, Martin. So just keep, you know, keep it at the level he's at. Yeah. Yeah. Because he had a bit of a hard start to his career, didn't he? And now he's, uh, he's coming yeah, well, he back. He lost to Michael Stupart less than a year ago. 
Oh, God. Danny Cassius Connor, get fat boy Floyd ready for September. I'm coming for him. <laughs> I'll even go Pompey to dethrone him. Hashtag the Connor clan. <laughs> Danny, you know, he's great, Danny. Danny's got his own uh, challenge belt fight coming up. I yeah, yes, he's on 16th of Tolworth. Yeah. Uh, Danny, you've got to say, brilliant for boxing. Yeah. Fantastic ambassador for boxing. Hope he stays in boxing when he finishes his career because he's just brilliant for the sport. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, Danny, I heard you had an, un- an unwelcome visitor the other day, which you announced, and I hope you sorted that all out. So. Cool. You know what that means. There you go. <laughs> uh, Robin Deakin, Steve, you look big on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I look big off TV. <laughs> <laughs> Robin's got his own fight coming up this weekend, I think, hasn't he? He's supposed to be fighting the um, Vicky that fought, Vicky 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 fought Vicky Burns. Yeah. Well, I mean, Robin obviously hasn't been able to get his British board licence. Yeah. Um, this Malta <laughs> thing now, i just not recognised by anybody. B-I-B-A, now. These fights, B-A is or whatever. Yeah, they're not even recognised by anybody now. These fights aren't recorded anywhere. and. I mean, Robin needs to do his thing. It'd be great, you know, do you know, if he can actually beat him, I know it won't ever be noted, that'd be a fantastic fillet for him. But so I wish Robin all the yeah. best on Saturday. Good luck, Robin. Good, Good luck, Robin. Uh, Connor Wright, stay humble, do talking in the ring. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the message coming across in there. Great kid, nice. Connor, and he's, I've, I've met him. He's a good amateur prospect from nearby Bletchley. And, uh, oh, yeah, nice new mate. Yeah, well, Milton yeah. Keynes based. And he's a nice, lovely kid, and uh, his dad's a uh, coach up in uh, MK. The MK uh, Victors. MK well. Victors. Oh, yeah, yeah, I went to go and see they had yeah. uh, Ross Birkinshaw there a while yeah. back for their oh, amateur show. Great 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 John, John Scribbins also commented as well do you have any plans of ever putting on a show in Wales? No, not after you top the table. I'm answering now on Steve's behalf. <laughs> Sod <laughs> Wales. <laughs> we did actually look. I, we did actually look at Wales a while back. I went down, had a meeting with Gary Lockett in Wales um, a few years back, and we sort of looked at it. We went to a few of the venues down there, but it was it, it's not. It's very hard to put it on there. There's there's an awful lot of individual managers down there, and it's really hard to pull it together and make it work when you're having to work with so many different different people. So it, it just didn't work for us. So we we passed that up. We're looking at different areas, but. Wales isn't one we're looking at. The funny thing about Wales is uh, you've got some big fighters down there. You've got Lee Selby, you've got the likes of Cleverley. But even when they fight for the titles, they don't have they don't pull in big numbers <coughs> from you know like the types of the boys from London do, etc. And for the Welsh, for me, uh, they seem like they're quite a passionate nation, and you know they get behind their teams in the rugby and the football, and you know there's thousands of them out there in France now. But for the boxing, they never seem to get. The sort of never the height never seems to get quite to the level that the it does for other sports. Remember, because that, yeah, that the millennium they got behind him. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, long time ago. Yeah, but um, I don't know what it is, but there seems to be something that doesn't quite. Well, when they did the Haskins thing, at, yeah, when Chris Sanagar's good promoter when he's down there, but they don't seem to be creating the atmosphere that's created in no, London. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think it's fair. Um, yeah, no, I think that's fair enough. Uh, so. Other news from Goodwin Boxing then for the week, uh, you were featured your fighter Frank Buglioni in um, Boxing News. Yeah, it was a little bit good article on it, wasn't it? Good article. So it's talking about, for those that haven't read it, um, Frank Buglioni being placed by the board in a mandatory position to fight Hosea Burton. And it's uh, a comment piece by Joe Gallagher talking about his surprise at Frank Buglioni getting the, the call from the British board uh, to fight Hosea Burton. So what do you make of it then, is it? Is it a surprise to you or well deserved? It wasn't a surprise to me. Um, I thought that the board had a 50 50 call to make between Frank and Tom Baker. You couldn't have argued if they'd given it, they'd given the position to Tom Baker. I wouldn't have argued, but I feel that Frank, as former WBO European champion, fighting for a world title, had the nod, and I was, I was confident we would get it. But I would, you know, but if they had nominated Tom Baker, I wouldn't have been. Screaming, but we were confident we'd get that for Frank. That was, that was once Frank signed with me. That was what of my aim was to get him that, that nomination, and we managed to do it. And I think his career now becomes a lot more exciting now yeah. because of that. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to have a move on. So we're going to look at the fights that have been made in the last week. That uh, there's some exciting news going about in boxing in general. So we're going to come firstly. I reckon we'll come over to you, Max. So let's take a look first of all at Anthony Crawler and Jorge Linares, uh, announced for September up in Manchester. Yeah. What do you make of it? I think it's a, it's a great, great fight. Um, I think you can't really... You, you've got it's unification, uni, unif, unification fight. Um, Crawler's sort of the hero up in Manchester at the minute, isn't he? I mean, he seems to be uh, knocking down walls and knocking people out, and, and they, they all love him up there. Um, I think it's got the makings of a really, really tasty fight. Um, and for me, I hope Connor does it because he's sort of he's a bit of a 
British British hero at the minute yeah. for, for world boxing. Um, so yeah, I think great, great fight, and hopefully Andy, Andy does the job on the night. Yeah. What about yourself then, Adrian? I, I obviously am back in Crawler, you know, he's one of ours, but Linares is, is one of you know, the toughest opponents out there in that division, so it's got the makings of a great fight. I just uh, look forward to seeing that. Uh, I've just seen the photo <laughs> used for Max's uh, introduction to the world. I had a great time with Ali Pally, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not think Linares is on the way down slightly? The Kevin Mitchell fight from last year, he got hurt badly in that, and we saw that Mitchell was on the decline so, yeah. from the Barroso defeat. Yeah, yeah. This, and yeah. then he's been out of injury since, hasn't he? It's yeah, so, yeah, that would, you know, that goes in our favour, really. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Should, should work out for Crawler. Yeah. The big um, question, though, is it a unification fight? Because that's what the big thing is. They've been going on and on and on about it. It's been driving me nuts. This is what I. One of the things I hate about boxing, which is a bit ironic I'm sat here on a Tuesday evening giving up my time, but they've made up this WBC diamond belt because yeah. Zatar Khanin won the, the WBC belt whilst Linares was champion in recess. So they make up a belt so that it can become a unification. I'll just like just make it a good fight. It's a good yeah. fight. It doesn't need the, the trinkets no, associated. Don't but I don't know, that's just my thought as, as a fan. Um, the other one coming out this week was Kovalev Ward. Any thoughts on that? Oh, that that is, you know, I think one of the harder fights to call. Kovalev is just a beast. He can box and he's strong. He can punch. He can take it. He can walk through punches. You know, yeah. he's just. It seems like there's no beating this man at the minute. But then Andre Ward is one of the technically best out there. You know, probably the technically best boxer you've got going at the minute. So it's, you know, it's a real. It's got the makings of a of one of the like better better fights, you know, one that is going to be remembered. Yeah. You know, it's got all the ingredients for it. I'd like to see Ward win. You know, the way Kovalev sometimes presents it, I think, you know, it's not doesn't come out as as a, much of a nice guy. Let's say as. Uh, Can't all be you, Adrian. <laughs> 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 no, but he's you know it, some some of the things he was saying, like the way he, he treated the um, fight against um what's his name, is it, uh, Jones. Is it? Uh, no, I'm thinking of someone else. The Hopkins um, fight? No, not Hopkins. Um, oh, I've forgotten the guy's name now. That's not good. Uh, <laughs> but he punished him. He could have stopped it. No, the point. Pascal fight. Yeah, the pa yeah, John Pascal <coughs> fight. And he um, he just he just bullied him for for twelve rounds. Should yeah. have stopped it. Earlier. He's vicious. Yeah, he's just a, a real spiteful, nasty bloke. Like, but yeah. then that is the nature of the sport. And. Uh, I'd like to see how Andre Ward deals with it, and if Andre Ward can be the man to humble him, you know. Yeah, how do you see it going, Max? I think this is a sort of fight that makes boxing one of the best sports that, in the world because we, you can talk about the fight, and Adrian thinks thinks that uh, Ward will do the job. But you know, we've had a chat before before the uh, show, and it's split opinion, isn't it? Really, some think Kovalev will be too strong and too powerful, but others think Ward will. Uh, will box his way to um his bo box his way to victory. So I mean it's, it's a really, really tough fight to call. Um for me I think Kovalev does just on pure power um and strength, but it is gonna be a great, great fight and I'm really looking forward to seeing that one. Yeah. Steve? Ward. Ward. Easily or you sound convinced about it. I think him. Ward I think Ward is just a super, super quality boxer. And these this level of fighter comes around once in a while. And the Kovalevs of this world, he's super strong, but there have been times in his fights when he has looked less than impressive. And I think Ward is just a level above anything he's ever fought. And I think Ward will just outskill him out boxing and, and win comfortably on points. Yeah. Okay. I'm going for a Kovalev stoppage. But then my predictions are shocking. He's <laughs> <laughs> lost now. <laughs> I'm retiring. Right, let's grab some of the interactions quickly. I've seen there's a few come through. Um, Say that I've managed to lose them, but uh, right, where are we? There's a very good one for you, Martin. Is there? Is yeah. Saying how handsome I look tonight. Uh, uh, no. Okay. Parallel show you've got. Mo Babazane. It's probably pronounced wrong. I have an amateur record. Uh, oh, looking no. for some help. So I think essentially Mo for that one. You probably want to get in contact with uh, with Steve directly. We probably don't have time now. Jimmy Byrne. How you doing, Jimmy? Um, to Mr. Goodwin, Kevin is being looked after. Would like to ask if you think Joshua Card does a pay-per-view price tag. Uh, I think we'll be coming on to that shortly and there'll be different views. Or maybe not different views, but uh, I certainly know where you're coming from, Jimmy. 
Um, we'll, we'll discuss it shortly. John Scriven, spot on guys. I only made this comment last night. Well done, Wales. It's a shame the people of Wales don't support their local professional boxers the way they support the football and rugby, which is the point you're making, yeah. Max. Let's face it, boxing is far more entertaining than watching a load of blokes running around chasing a ball. <laughs> Blaine Courtney, uh, Crawler will beat Linares. Um, he'll be the number one lightweight when he does. Carl, uh, Carl Myers, how you doing, sir? Hi all, Adrian Martin, good lad he is. Cheers, <laughs> Carl. Uh, Mark Adam Little, has Bray Higgs been confirmed for 22nd of October? Uh, I, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I've not seen any confirmation. Uh, Laura, hi guys, loving these videos, and John, you do a brilliant job, and it's a pleasure to be published on your site, Boxing Media UK, Big Up Wales, bit of plug in there, self-publicist, don't worry about it, uh, Ward is too clever, okay, and Josh, you said there was something uh, from yourself, uh, it was from Mr. Biola, but it appears I can't get it back up now, Mr. Biola, yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know, the guy second from the left, which is you, Martin, um, but I heard you was mouthing off about me at the end of the <laughs> show last week. Uh, if you're coming to a press conference for Pompey tomorrow, I'll see you in person, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I'm not going, sadly, Biola. Bottled um, it, bottled it. Bottled it, no. Um, you didn't, you didn't say it, you just, it was a joke. You made a joke that made I was joking it. about it because you got dropped, don't worry about it, son. Right, where are we up to? Uh, Pay-per-view card this week. So we're looking at um, Jimmy Burns' question, which was around, is it worthy of being a pay-per-view card? So top of the bill, we've got Anthony Joshua versus Dominic Brazil. Underneath that, we've got uh, George Groves, Martin Murray. Then we've got Chris Eubank versus Tom Duran. And we've got a few other names that people will be familiar with. So let's, let's firstly kind of preview the card. So how do we see it all going? Let's go left to right. We'll start Joshua Brazil with you, Adrian. I just think it's another one for Joshua to stop. I mean, Brazil is a, is a good level opponent. He, you know, he's got a good amateur pedigree. He's technically a good boxer, but I just don't think he has the power or the strength to deal with Joshua. I think Joshua's too fast and, and too powerful. When he hits someone, they stay hit. I know Joshua's got a lot to do in terms of progression, to really be a force on the world scene, but for Brazil, I think it's just it's just a level above. And with regards to it being pay per view worthy, I think it is. You know, uh, you really, got, really, well, Olympic Jesus uh, Christ, <laughs> Olympic champion, like Olympic gold medalist. Do you want to buy my watch? Two hundred quid. <laughs> no, but uh, you play that shit. And, 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 and I get it, I get it. But he, Joshua himself, has the has the credibility to be on a pay per view show, world heavyweight champion. And Olympic gold medalist. This, this, this. On in terms of selling point, people will pay to see it. People want to see it. That's you know, uh, that that's why I believe it because people want to see it. You know, he's he's proved himself through the ranks and he, he's worked his way to that position. You're in a proper fight. I mean, I think the pay per view model comes down to this really simply that for Eddie Hearn, and, I, and I, I haven't spoken to anybody about this, so I'm just for Eddie Hearn to sign Joshua. He's obviously and keep him under contract. He's obviously have to pay him massive money. Yeah. Otherwise, Joshua will run off to Al Heyman in America, um, similar to where Selby has gone. And so I would, I would guess he's under funda massive financial pressure to keep Joshua. And because of that, he has to build pay per view cards around him. So that's why I believe it's pay per view. Is it worth pay per view worthy? N not in a million years, because we're already pay per view. We pay for Sky and we pay for the sports. So we're already paying. You know, you don't get. Sky Sports, you don't get the big game where the Premiership will be decided. And then say, by the way, you've been paying for Premiership football all year. This is Manchester United against Liverpool. It's now going to cost you about fifth price. It's tenner. It's a yeah. tenner. And, and although, and it's Manchester United, <laughs> but they're paying Liverpool reserves because they've already qualified. But we're going to put that as pay per view. It is not. If you actually strip it down to the actual model, the consumer is already paying. Yeah. And if you're putting Joshua in a really good fight, a Joshua against. Um, Deontay Wilder, Joshua David Hay, yeah, pay, but you could, that is an exceptional fight, pay-per-view. This is not an exceptional fight, it's a one-sided beatdown. Yeah. Um, you can't, honest to God. And the undercard doesn't support it enough you to bank, justify... Well, Eubank Duran is probably a, a, um, a fight that's less competitive than Eubank Nick Blackwell, realistically. Yeah. I mean, Duran will get ironed out, and the only good fight on there is a Groves Murray fight. But they are still two fighters, much as I respect both of them, who have failed multiple times at world level. 
they're not pay per view. I don't. I, I think it's it's a bit of a spin thing, isn't it? You 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 you're sort of the public is conned into believing this thing's worth paying extra for, but we're already paying. So to me, my view is if you can't afford to keep Joshua on normal Sky, let him go over to um, Al Heyman or somebody in America if they can pay. I don't think people should pay again. But if people are going to pay for it, then they're justified in doing it. If people are... It's a supply and demand issue. Yeah, isn't it? so if, if, if people refuse to pay, they can't do it. Yeah. What it needs really is if people don't think it's paid, don't buy it. Yeah. It's like, you can watch it two days later or watch it on the internet and say, well, just never download it on a stream. Yeah, that's why we do. <laughs> <laughs> so as a boxing fan then, Max, what do you make of it all? I, I just think the whole pay per view thing is a bit of a joke, really, isn't it? Um, what was it, two, three years ago? No, it must have been three, maybe four years ago now. Was it when Hay for Harrison? Was that four years ago or so? Uh, um, that was, that was pay per view, and I think that was six years ago. That six, was, years ago. six years ago. That was the final nail in the coffin um, for boxing fans, and they all said, this is an absolute joke. What did we, what did we talk about 10 punches thrown in four rounds? Um, and that photo is just too much, boys. <laughs> the um, but I mean, you know, then that what, was no what, better what, than what, Charles all of us in here are paying our subscription for Sky. We're probably paying upward of sixty quid each. Some people probably paying over a hundred pound. Why is Anthony Joshua versus Brazil? Is it Brazil? Is that how we say it? Yeah. What? Why is that worth twenty pound? Because for me. There's no, and there's nothing to back that up either. There's no, like you say, Eubank, Eubank Jr. Duran is, is, is a mismatch. Um, Groves Murray is, Groves Murray is probably the, is the best fight. You could, if you were going to actually put a top of the bill, you'd probably say Groves Murray is the one more but boxing fans are looking forward to rather than actually seeing Joshua. But that's the Joshua's the golden boy that everyone loves. And don't get me wrong, I love Anthony Joshua as, as much as the next person, but is it worth paying £20 to watch that fight? No, it's not. And that's what you're actually billing it as. The only fight that they're actually saying is worth paying for, effectively, is Andy Joshua. And it's not. That's probably one of the worst fights of the night. And, you know, we're all paying big money to, to, watch, to watch boxing on Sky Sports. And Eddie Hearn puts on some great shows. But this one is just it's not good enough. Not yeah. good enough at all. I did see a brilliant tweet the other day that said about... If you begrudge paying sixteen pound ninety nine for the uh, for the pay per view, then you can go out and put six hundred and fifty pounds on a Joshua win, and you'll win that sixteen pounds back in profit. <laughs> Those are the kind of odds you're talking about for this fight. You have to put six hundred and fifty odd quid on to win back sixteen pounds in profit. So there you go. Um, oh, what are we up to? So. Uh, Steve, the polo top looks better than your shirt the other week from uh, Carl from? Myers. Cheers, Carl. Viola, <laughs> Viola, don't hurt Martin, he's fragile. I'm all right, don't worry about it. He, he can come and punch me. Viola, Viola, I'll tell you what, we'll see you tomorrow. Why don't you come down on the show next week? Fucking I know! And be an anchor. And you have an invite, Viola, to come next week and drop him with body shots. Show him how hard you hit, teach him a lesson once and for all. Be able to Viola, welcome next it. Week. And welcome it. Come on down. In a very nice way, shake your hand, you can come and punch me, it's all good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, various people on there discussing how it's not really worthy. So, in terms of what's the, 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 the Groves Murray fight, people are saying that that's the one that's worth watching. To me, that doesn't even excite me particularly. Like, two people that have had seven world title fights between them and failed on every single occasion. It's a good Saturday night fight night headline. Uh, it's not pay per view worthy. Well, to me. It's a good chief support, though, isn't it? I think. I don't agree it's a good cheap so not good enough for that level, is it? I, I don't, yeah, I just agree. If the level's poor to begin with. <laughs> yeah, if you start at a poor level then uh... Yeah, it is. It's, it's not great, is it? Yeah. But then Adrian, who's he's a boxing fan, you've got to respect people he, he believes it's worth paying for. Yeah. So and I think at the end of the day obviously I, and you but the only way of keeping Joshua in this country is to do pay per view. So if the people are gonna buy it, then that's the majority view, isn't it? So yeah. I mean, I, I just think when you you know when you've got that pedigree, when you've done all that hard work, that is, I guess, it, it's one of the perks of everything, and one of the rewards of everything you've done, all the hard work you've put in. You know, he's he's heavyweight world champion, he's Olympic gold medalist, he deserves it. Mm -hmm. And uh, but do, but do, do you believe the public, who go to work, and probably many of these people earn ten pounds an hour in their jobs, fifteen pound an hour sometimes, you know, maybe. Do you yeah. think people should go out in the week? 
and work an extra hour <laughs> but of their time at work rather than be with their family to pay for Anthony Joshua yeah. when they're already paying for Sky Sports. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess when you, when you look at it like that, it's it's more of an issue with Sky Sports charging so much monthly, then, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think that yeah, no, that, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, the that, whole model the whole, the, the whole, it goes right is down. Like, I do. Get, Anthony start. Joshua needs to earn well, and he deserves it. Anybody that gets in the ring deserves to earn good money. So I have no yeah. dispute with that. But I'm, my argument is how the money is spread around. There's a lot yeah. of people to earning a lot of money from this. And it's the average person in the street who's a sports fan that's having to pay for it. And money doesn't come that easy to many people. So, no, no, it's true. Right. It's true. Uh, we'll wrap it up there. I think we've got the gist of it. That uh, there's two sides to it, Adrian. Yeah, exactly. In, in support, and you know, if you don't want to watch it, don't pay for it. Simple as that. Oh, I won't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if, you know, um, for those there, that are hard up, make a night of it with your friends. All meet up, chip in three, four, five quid each, depending on how many of you there are. Yeah, but I've done and that before. My mates don't pay me back, so I get absolutely screwed over. <laughs> 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 you need better mates, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, Biola Kulos, I'll see you at some point, Martin. You won't be calling me out. So. It's all love, Biola. Please do come and punch me and we'll shake hands and it's all good. You're scared. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, not paid for you at all, well said. Okay, so we're going to move on to bets of the week. So, Steve, um, bets of the week, you're going with AJ. Uh, inside the distance. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing what we've got to do with the bets of the week, we're sometimes being forced to put up bets on fights we would never do. So what we thought we would do... <laughs> and then I lose them. Yeah, but the thing is, I might do... <laughs> well, you're giving a bet of the week out of something you wouldn't normally back because we've been forced to do it. But we, we want to identify where we do believe there are bets that are worth having. Yeah. And we think, jointly, there are two bets this week. One is AJ to win inside the distance. One to 12. It's just buying money for nothing. I mean, he's going to stop. He's not going the distance with Brazil. And he's going to stop him. One to 12... Means you can have, you know, you can have ten grand on a win, about eight hundred quid. That's not a bad bet, to be honest, because you know it's it's, it's easy money. Well, I'll be lumping on that. I will be having a bet on that, and it's the first bet I've probably had on boxing for about about a few months. How much are you going to pay me not to bet on it? No, you can bet on it. No, because if I go bet on it, he loses. No, 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 you get sparked. That's, that's not. That's not. You say he's going to win, and he's losing. So. <laughs> yeah. And also, we think Grove. I mean, the the Groves against Murray. The, I was going to have a good bet on Groves. He was four to six. Um, and we thought that was a cracking bet. He's now gone four to nine. So whilst I still think he'll win, four to nine is too short to actually put a bet on. But we do think he'll win. But it's not really a, a bet now because it's gone a little bit too short. Yeah. It's probably truly reflecting the results of four to nine. There's not enough value. Not enough value. The value actually is AJ at one to twelve for big players. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to have a look now. We've got a promo video for the 9th of July show down in Portsmouth. So what we're going to do is play you through the video that uh, will hopefully give you an idea, a bit of a taster for what's coming up down on the Portsmouth card where there's going to be Michael Devine versus Floyd Moore. Uh, my friend Biola's going to be on there. There's various fights coming up. So if you want to roll that and we're ready, then uh, you'll see that at home. Hang on. Technical issues. <laughs> Can't get a staff, can you? Kevin Speed <laughs> thumbs up yeah so I'm not quite sure how successful that was or not we're, we're gonna try another one shortly so a few more comments have come in Kirk Raymond uh, went to a Hellraiser oh, event a few weeks back you've taken small hall shows to another level the whole atmosphere and night at Goodwin show has certainly taken over fair play cheers Kurt thanks a lot uh, Scott Davis can't wait for July 16th. We're going to do a preview of the July 16th with uh, another cracking video. Like the one you just <laughs> seen. I messed up last time. <laughs> <laughs> you just had some music in the poster. My bad. I pressed the wrong one. I hope it was a good poster. <laughs> Uh, Trevor Padden, hi Martin, loving your work. Thank you, Trevor, appreciate it, mate. Uh, I sent the post last week, but out of focus, Kev couldn't see it, explained to camera work. The show is great, much better than the one show. <laughs> <laughs> Only gives you an alternative viewing of an evening. I'm persuading Trevor to give up the one show to watch this. Oh, good man, good man, Trevor. 
<laughs> Not sure about the new background, preferred the old one. Steve, can I have a signed photo? <laughs> <laughs> can I have one of you and him on holiday? Yeah. <laughs> taking the beat because somebody asked for one the other week. Uh, Jimmy Byrne, what's all your thoughts on the announcement recently about pro boxers being allowed to fight at the uh, amateurs, uh, being allowed to fight amateurs at the upcoming Olympics? And do you agree it should even have been considered? It will kill the sport. So, Adrian, you're someone who hasn't been pro all that long in the game. What's your view on it? It's it's a different sport. It's a different sport. Pros and amateurs, as much as it is boxing, it's completely different. You know, you, you're taught to, you know, in the pros, it's more about, you know, picking your shot, waiting, and and it's a lot more of a hurt game. The amateurs, the amateurs is more, you know, get your points and get the get the win. You know, pros that have been in the sport for you know you've got some top amateurs that are right young kids you know you can get you know like Amir Khan when he was young uh, going in the Olympics and stuff um, you think him at, or was he 17 when he was in the Olympics yeah. mm-hmm. facing someone like Manny Pacquiao a seasoned professional who's been doing it for years you know a world champion a man who's been learning to hurt for, for however many years like 15 years or whatever he's been in the sport he go in there and there's a good chance he gets hurt and hurt badly, even even with that kind of point scoring system, if they get caught. But it could also make some of the best pros look stupid. You know, some of the best pros out there would go in there with a top standard amateur and get just schooled with a like the pit a patter style of fighting and um it's just it's different and there's no place for it. It's just I think it's the AIBA trying to Gain control, like monopolize the whole boxing. It's yeah, just, See, the board of logic. Sorry, of, sorry, sorry. Yeah, the, the board of logic objection as well, and the British yeah. board of control. Listen, it's, it's a ludicrous idea. It's so stupid. It's not real. As Adrian said, it's just a joke. It's just yeah. It's not even the possible. WBC and the WBA have come out and said that any of their fighters participate yeah. will be stripped and taken yeah. out of any ranking system. Yeah, so yeah. It's just I, crazy. I, I think that's good because, and I don't like the 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 big pros that are like trying to pioneer it. Like like what's Klitschko saying? Yeah, yeah it should be going in yeah. there. Oh, well, you've done it. You've been there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's pros? What, what's that about? You know. Yeah. Crazy. I agree. Uh, JP Smith made a comment. Uh, Steve mentioned to Martin the other week, even if you put on six more shows this year, how much value for money will your season ticket be? Incredible. Cheers for that. Uh, Working hard. Don't forget, season tickets, 12 months you'll call, £199. You can come to all the shows. And as a reminder, because somebody queried that the other day, it's not calendar year, it's 12 no, months from, from the day you. they buy it. So it just runs yeah. off 12 months. So it's fantastic value. And um, if it's any good win boxing show, affiliated show. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're gonna have a, a preview now of the 9th of July show. So the one that we didn't get the video for, but I'm sure we'll see it another week, hopefully. So we've got um, <laughs> Floyd Moore, Michael Devine headlining it. Floyd's one of your favourite fighters, isn't he, Steve? And look, Michael, Michael, I like Michael as well. I mean, I helped Michael and his manager James Paisley in the early part of his career. He featured on our shows. He's a really nice kid, Michael. Um, but obviously, Floyd is my my fighter, he's the guy I manage, he's the, I'm very, very good friends and close friends with Floyd and his manager. Um, it's a fantastic fight. I think, um, I think Floyd's favourite, Floyd's favourite, but Michael has a chance. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't disrespect Michael because he's a, he's a good fighter. Uh, he's fighting in Ireland this week, I know he's going to be up for it. It's going to be a fantastic fight. I think it's a fight that will not let anybody down who comes to Portsmouth. I think Floyd has the edge. But Michael has a chance. I think it's a fantastic fight. Yeah, likely to be a war. What do you reckon, to Max? So, totally agree with what Steve just said. Um, I've watched Michael from uh, from his early stages of his career, from when uh, Steve started back in Milton Keynes, and obviously Michael's come on leaps and bounds from there. I remember on his 21st birthday, and he got put on his backside about five times by Mark Alexander, and um, that was a really poor show. But he's he's really stepped up since, and it's been a bit stop start recently, hasn't it? And it's it's been a bit sort of. It's not been great at times, but then Floyd, you could say the same as well. You know, he's he's lost We've fights. Got chief support to Floyd Moore, Michael Devine, is um, the fight between Joel McIntyre and Idrani. Idrani's the guys I just said who bashed up Charlie Duffield, and he didn't just flukily beat him; he give him quite a bad hiding, to yeah. be honest. Um, and that was a big upset as well, wasn't it? Big upset, but the, do you know the thing about that, the Adrani? He had a record, I think it was 5 and 18. Yeah. But you need to look beneath the record. He had been and fought really good people in, in, in good countries. So his record was false. I, you can see he's a far yeah, better, you know, you put him in with a 3-0 novice. And yeah. I don't, I'm not sure that, that that was the right thing to do. Now, Joel's a much more seasoned professional. And Joel's thinking, right, I'm going to take somebody on who's come here and beaten a Warren 5 on a Warren show. Um, 
So he's come and called for it, we've made the fight, and Joel wants to show people <coughs> the difference in levels that he is over these other light heavyweights in the UK. Joel McIntyre will be fighting for big titles in 2017, but he's got to go and beat and do a job against Didrani, but it's a brilliant fight. Yeah, okay, so we're a little bit posh for time, so we'll go through them as quickly as we can. Yeah, Lucas Ballingall, Mikel Solankini, challenge belt. Solankini went five rounds with Duke Mika, who's gone as a new yeah. sensation. Biola Kudos took a decent fight against um, Thomas Love Rudan, who Carl Wheeler did beat on points, so I'm sure Biola's going to want to make a statement and do it more impressively than Carl Wheeler. Dave Birmingham, former Pompey footballer, he has his third outing against Kwasim Hassan, and a really exciting fighter, Charlie, Charlie the Mighty Quinn from Southampton, he makes his debut at light heavyweight, and there is a, uh, a super flyweight or flyweight who's also on the show from Portsmouth. Um, it's a great, great little card that is, um, and to be honest, it's sold out, so unless you've got a ticket from the box, there's no tickets available. Oh, right, okay. So uh, if you're missing out, then that's your own tough luck, really. But it'll be a, a cracking night. I know I've seen Floyd's fans up at York Halls, I've not seen them down at Portsmouth. Uh, I'm sure they make lots and lots of noise and cause, uh, yeah, mayhem. It'll be good fun. It will be, it will be. Um, Daniel Curley, massive thank you, Steve, for supporting my charity ball and donating an amazing VIP prize for a fight. Thank you. Pleasure, pleasure. Okay, so we're going to move on now and chat with Adrian Martin. So we've been talking to him on and off throughout. So can you give us a bit of background on Adrian about how long you've been a pro uh, and where you kind of come from boxing wise? Okay, well. Um... <laughs> someone more experienced than me and uh, I always fought someone with a winning record which was good so I always learned and I, ne I never got stopped I never you know, I never put, got put down ever in the canvas so yeah. it was always good it was always good learning you know with boys that were more experienced than me you know and um, I think since I turned pro I really came into my man strength and uh, you know it's, it's the pros is really I've taken to the pros pretty well I think so how old are you now? Uh, 24. Okay so you start to really build yourself I mean, yeah. you're talking weight-wise about you're currently at super welterweight or light yeah. middleweight, whichever way you want to term it. Uh, you're talking about possibly even dropping down because you're fighting July seventh, aren't you? Your you weights there or thereabouts now. Yeah, I'm, uh, no, July sixteenth. July sixteenth. So yeah. I get July seventh. Right. Jesus. <laughs> so I uh, made that up. Just like a random thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just. <laughs> um. <laughs> Maybe you're fighting like me or something. The other <laughs> fancies is. So, um. um, now nah, I'm fighting uh, July sixteenth. Um, yeah, I feel good for it. Yeah? Yeah, I feel ready. You know, I, I had a bit of an injury and I had to pull you out. You pulled out of one, didn't you? Yeah, I was gutted, you know. I, I, I you know, I'd let a lot of people down, you know. But I thought I'd let them down worse to go in there and fight on, you know, fight on one hand and go in there and, and be able to put on a performance that they're, they're coming to see, you know. So what was the injury? Uh, I'd broken my uh, right hand. Is it back now, fully recovered? Yeah, it is. He said, now I've got a knuckle double the size, but, you know. Not coming handy. Yeah. Well, that's all right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fill, fill, fill out the glove a bit more, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah, it's, it's healed up nicely. And, um, so do you know who you're fighting in July? Uh, yeah, uh, Hajin de Gil. Okay. Uh, he's a game lad. You know, he's, he's been in there with some good opponents, so I can't take anyone lightly. You know, I believe I've got the skill set to beat him. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think I've got two quicker hands, and, uh, and I found him quite ring smart, but... He's, he's game and he's been in there with good lads so I can't take anyone for granted you know I'm gonna go in there train my absolute hardest and put on the best performance I can put on and you know that's where I plan to go um, going back to what you said about weight um, yeah at the minute I'm boxing at super well but I walk around at my weight so it's 140 pounds no, 154 154 yeah, yeah, yeah. you're really getting your maths wrong I'm going wrong today yeah, yeah no uh, but I walk around at 70, 71 kilos. Yeah. You know, if I try and eat more to go up heavier, I mean, I've been 73, <clears throat> but that was at Christmas. Yeah. You know, I my weight doesn't really fluctuate, so I'm sort of on weight all the time. And 
you look at some of the other opposition in the Super World Division, and they're coming down from 78 kilos, some of them, you know, and you think, when I'm in, you know, when I get myself into that title, con like, uh, t title spot, that's when I think, I can, I can make well one. So I can go down to it, go down to it. Why, yeah. why give myself any disadvantages? There's yeah. no point. You know, I know I can make the weight. You know, especially on title shots, there's a chance that you can get day before weighing, or, or you know, I just work double hard at making sure I get the weight off. You know, but at the minute, where I'm at now, you know, I'm strong. I'm strong at super welterweight, so I want to stay at super welterweight. But when when those title shots come, then it's something that you know I'll discuss with mm. Steve, and we'll look at going uh, going down. Yeah. You know. If that's the right thing to do. So what's Adrian like as a fighter then, Steve? In terms of because you speak very highly. There's normally Mark Little and Adrian that kind of get very, very good appraisals from yourselves in terms of the kind of people to work with and. Uh... It's great. Adrian's great to work with, and he's really dedicated, totally committed. You don't get, you know, everything's positive with him, and he's very appreciative of what we do. We're appreciative of what he does, and he's got a very good skill set for the pro game that we're gonna nurture along and deliver him for the titles when the time is right. I'm sure he'll win he'll win titles at the southern area and above, but we're gonna deliver him at the right time. No, not too much rushing, but just let him learn his job. Yeah. I've got I've got total confidence in him and the titles. So where do your aspirations lay then? I'd like to go all the way, you know, but first things first, is get myself in title contender uh, title positions. When the start off winning, you know, southern area and look at going above and beyond, you know? Yeah. I've got to win that first. I'm not going to put a limit to where I can go, but again, you just got to, got to work at each stage, you know, don't run before you can walk, you know, I'll turn around and say, I'll go, I'll do a 12-week training camp and do a 10-round fight for an English title, I'll get smashed, <laughs> let's be honest, right, <laughs> you know, it, take, it takes time, you start off, you're a four-round fighter, then you build onto a six-round fighter, an eight-round fighter, a ten, and you go through the stages, so it's just, you know, so it's about the levels, yeah, you take the level up, you know, in the right at the right time at the right pace you know i'm 24 years old i'm starting to really get my man strength i can feel it i feel it in the gym i feel it in this in my sparring you know i'm regularly sparring blokes are stone heavier than me yeah so and i'm and i'm all right hold my own you know i've taken big shots who hasn't you know but it's i've only been toughened up from from everything i've done in the gym you know and i'm always sparring good prospects so i don't turn up to a gym and because me and my coach, we train in a gym where I'm the only professional, so we go and seek all our sparring elsewhere. So everywhere I'm turning up, you know, the boys want to impress because I'm stepping into into their home, so they're going to have to work double hard to make sure that I don't want to come back next week. But yeah. I'm going to come back next week because <clears throat> it's good. It's it's all part of the learning, you know. So and and I like that. I'm always in there with tough prospects. You know, I've been down Terry Stewart's gym and moved around with some, some of the boys there and you know they're, they're strong kids down there so it's all good because I learned from it all and Thanks. and that's what's going to take me to the next level. Yeah so you've got a level of dedication that is probably hard to fathom for people at home watching it you know the the physical requirements and as you say the travelling requirements the yeah. going and sourcing sparring and, and all those things. That... Uh, it's, it's hard no if you're thinking about doing the pro game you've got to think properly about it you know you've got to say to yourself right I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing a lot of work early on, you know. But that's what it toughens you up. And if you're deserving of getting anywhere in boxing, you have to go through all these steps first, you know. These are all the steps you've got to go through, you know. I you know I work my ass off. I'm a full time pro, you know. I don't at the minute I do a little bit of one to one to try and get some some money to tie me over for each week. But yeah. my main job is is boxing. You yeah. know that that's how I treat it, you know. And you take take a financial hit, so I'm, ha I'm living at home at the minute and stuff like that. But none of these things worry me. I'm, I'm fortunate enough that my parents support what I do, you know. I've got a girlfriend as well who supports what I do. Yeah. So, and, and I've got a good following, so, you know. It's a long-term investment in yourself. Ex exactly, exactly. Yeah. And a lot of things goes into it. You have to accept a lot of sacrifices, you know. I can't live the life that I would have lived being an accountant. Um, yeah. You know, when I was training to be an accountant before, but that's fine because I know the reward is so much sweeter. Just having my hand raised up at the end of a fight feels better than being able to go and blow five hundred quid on a night out. You know, yeah. and and sac it's sacrifice and reward, and, and I absolutely love, absolutely love what I'm doing, and it's, I've been the happiest in myself since I've done it. As much as it's hard work and everything, I feel good. 
Yeah. So. There you go, hopefully a little insight into uh, Adrian, a really interesting insight. She's been a pro boxer, it's not all glamour and fame, and it's, it's the hard work that goes alongside it. Um, so right, now we're going to have a look through the 16th of July show, which is where you're going to see Adrian. We've got another video that uh, will be as successfully lined up as last time, <laughs> fingers crossed. Uh, right, so Kevin, if you can hit play on that, that'd be great. taste of what to expect on July 16th. A nice professional video put together by Kev, so hopefully you appreciate that. So, five title fights on the night, Steve. Do you want to give us a rundown of I'll give you a brief expect? analysis. This is a proper show. Starts at three in the afternoon, we'll finish very late into the night, but it's a real good show. And it's not, we're not talking about one-sided beatdowns. We're talking five title fights here. Wally Camacho, Danny Cousins. Wally Camacho, the champion. Danny Cousins, a hungry man from Portsmouth. Danny's going to be giving everything for this. Wally wants to move on to another level. That will be a fantastic fight. Yeah. Um, Jack Morris, who fought for the English title against Tom Baker. He now comes in at Southern Area title against Kelvin Young, the former uh, WBO international champion. That's going to be an absolutely unbelievable fight. For, for Jack, it's his last chance of winning a major title. So he's, he's, he's going to give everything he's got. The John McCullum daughter Miller fight, You've already been hit by a chair in the previous oh, yeah, I've met both of them. That is a fantastic fight. McCallum Miller, absolutely unbelievable. Justin Menzi, 2 0, taking on former Southern Area tra champion Ryan Toms. Is it too big an ask for Justin Menzi? Maybe it is. Ryan Toms is going to try and reinstate himself back in title contention. Fantastic fight. Great way to find Josh out. Kennedy in, a, in a, an international title, which we're trying to find the, sort of the opponent at the moment. That's an unbelievable fight. And on the undercard, can't, too, too many to mention. Matthew Chan, the Southern Area champion, takes on Luke Fash. Matthew's going to be going in for another title fight, hopefully in September. Nuruddin Madoon, the man that wants to bash up every British heavyweight. <laughs> the man that nobody will fight because he's too dangerous. He takes on Kamil Sokolovsky. Mark Little, the unbeaten cruiserweight who has come from unlicensed, lost eight stone to become a professional boxer, got a great story. He's improving fast. Linus Eudothia, future star of Luton Boxing. He has his second pro fight. It's an absolutely brilliant card, start to finish. Um, anybody that's not doing nothing, 16th of July, head to your call. It's going to be an amazing night. Amazing night. Max, you're going to be there? PR, that is PR. That is PR <laughs> genius. <laughs> you're going to be there? I'll be there, mate. What fight are you looking forward to most out of the... Um, probably McCallum Miller, just from what we've seen on the uh, preview shows. Yeah. Uh, that one looks like it's going to be tasty. Um, yeah, I would say that's probably a fight I'm looking forward to most from that card. Have you got a favourite fight you like seeing down at your call? Is there anyone that always stands out to you? I've seen so many different fighters down there on different, Steve, different shows. Um, I like the fighters that bring bring the fans of the atmosphere. Um, Johnny Floyd, Garton. Yeah, Garton's good. Um, Floyd Moore always brings a good gathering down as well. So those two are um, probably the ones I like, like watching the most. And you're around for that, aren't you? 16th of July, it's not a Euros game? No, not a Euros game. It'll be over by then, mate, won't it? Will it? Okay. 10th of July, final. Will, will England have won it? Uh, we've won it, yeah. We'll be there in yeah. Paris. Yeah, yeah. Because you've been out to one recently, haven't you? Yeah, we went to the uh, Wales game, yeah. Um, yeah. In England, then absolute limbs when uh, that last goal went in from Sturridge in the last minute. Has your missus um, forgiven you yet? <laughs> no, she hasn't. I hope she's not watching either. No, all right, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll skip over that. <laughs> well, you're not telling the viewers what happened. I'm not telling the viewers what happened. I'm not getting Max into any more <laughs> trouble. Right, he gets to hit me in a minute. Uh, I bought a ticket. Um, I've got a ticket for the Wales game, I've got a ticket for the final, and unfortunately I've failed to tell the girlfriend, the fiancé, sorry, until, uh, 
Go get him. You've got to tell the girlfriend all the fiancé. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to tell the fiancé. Um, and I managed to actually stomach up the courage to do it three weeks before I was due to go out there. Didn't you find your ticket? Wait, this is bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I left my ticket on the table, she found it, um, and she's still with me, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, I went out there, I was on the day of my birthday as well, the game. Um, so yeah, I went out there, she wasn't very happy about it, she still isn't. Um, Sam had a good time, though. But yeah, it was good, <laughs> me and my brother had a good time out there, yeah. Uh, Celebrate my birthday. I heard your brother had a good time out he there. He did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so we're going to move on quickly, because um, we've run out of time, really. So, we have a quick look for the tweets of the week. We're going to start off with one that came out yesterday, Ahara Davis, who's fighting tonight um, sometime on uh, the Sky website at your course, the open workout front in Joshua, I believe. Uh, he tweeted Dave Ryan saying, I can't wait to smash you up, just be ready, punk. Uh, Dave Ryan, who, you know, he's probably achieved an awful lot more, he has achieved an awful lot more than Ahara Davis, didn't take too kindly to it. He said, Ahara Davis, I would snap your jaw and close that big ugly mouth of yours, you weak little shitbag. Why are we spelled weak? Decent, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole seven days of being a shitbag. <laughs> 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 He's not sat in my room one day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, David Allen, I, I've got great love for David Allen. He's uh, highly amusing on social media. Uh, this was on Saturday night, so he said, Saturday night without boxing isn't a Saturday night. Can't bring myself to watch football, so going to get my Lance Armstrong on. To clarify that, he then tweeted shortly afterwards, and by Lance Armstrong on, I mean go cycle, not stick a needle full of PEDs up my ass. <laughs> Just in case anyone from Bard is watching. Or... Final ones, we're coming on to Barry Jones, the Welshman who's had a cracking week on Twitter. Um... So his first one said, if we can get to half-time nil-nil, then England might start to panic, and that gives us a chance. Come in, Wales. And then he tweeted shortly after, that should read, come on, Wales, not come in, Wales. That's a totally different sport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the end finished there. He followed it up with, just hope it's a good game and everyone stays safe. Unless we lose, then I hope all the England fans get herpes. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I don't have herpes, and I had a great time, so cheers for that, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we love Barry Jones, a good man. Uh, right, so that brings us on to the final, and we're finished for the week. Uh, there's nothing uh, surpassed 8 o'clock almost now, so we haven't got time to do our drop the anchor Oh, finish. we have. Uh, well, you'll never get out of the way. Adrian, you've hurt your hand, didn't you? So you can't throw punches at me. Left, he's got a left. Ah, oh, bullshit. <laughs> and I hear Max is quite game to uh, give me a few punches. Yeah, so yeah. We're going to see the difference between a professional fighter and someone out of shape who's sat to my right. So, <laughs> 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 Just to uh, clarify, Mike, the lead tape, we've got, so we've, got, we've got 30 seconds where you have to survive. Carl Wheeler's top at the moment, we've dropped you in 9.3 seconds. Let's get Guys, this off. is second. Uh, obviously, dropped you in 13.6 seconds. Right, so I'm convinced we've got Adrian Martin. Move the chairs out of the way. Yeah, move the chairs in there. A man with two professional wins and no stoppages, so he can't hit very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty oh, sure about this. That's great, I agree with you. I'm confident this week. How many shots do I get? How many shots do I get? How many shots do I get? you got 30 seconds. You can do it two-handed, one-handed, you can do it life. Jump in one-handed, you hit the left. 30 seconds, you need 30 minutes, son. I've seen you punch. Let's go. <laughs> whoa, 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 Cheating. I'm going to do the countdown, all right? It's cheating. Three, two, one, go. Stop. <laughs> Twelve plus five, six seconds. Oh, <laughs> what happened? Well, well done, Adrian. Congratulations for uh, punching me. I bet B owners at home get his nuts off on this. I'd love to have a go at that. There you go. B owners are coming at me. I love you. Nothing we've missed. We missed the spa before. I think we have sparred in the past. Yeah, not Max, properly though. Yeah, they're not white collar days. So yeah. uh, Max is going to go both ways. I can see him licking his lips at this. Oh. Nearly taking the laptop with him, he's going both handed. Alright, Max, I'm free. Gets to fill his boots. 30 seconds. 3, 2, 1, go. Ah, you can tell he's an amateur. He's got nothing! He's got nothing! Oh, there's nothing there! 
Leader, what he saved Adrian from going there. <laughs> Bless them all. Ah, oh, jeez, every week. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think that just about wraps us up for the evening. So, thank you for everyone who's watched, everyone who's attended. Thank you to Adrian, Steve, Max for giving me a pummeling for 30 seconds, Kevin and uh, Josh behind the camera doing all the work, and we'll see you next week.